Hello and welcome to task for today, TFT 17. We are studying paper 1. We have completed 4 thinkers, Marx, Durkheim, Weber and Parsons. Today we will be studying the next thinker in our syllabus which is Robert K. Merton. Durkheim, if you remember, was a functionalist. He studied social order and the contribution of different parts of societal structure in the maintenance of social order. Thus, he studied the positive functions of the parts of society. The next thinker to study functionalism was Parsons and he tried to tackle those aspects of society which were not explained by Durkheim like social change. But he also lacked few things. For example, he did not study conflict and therefore Robert Merton who was also a structural functionalist, he studied conflict in a society. He attempted to refine and develop functionalist analysis, he said that the assumption that every aspect of the social system performs a positive function may not be correct. Thus, any part of society may be functional, dysfunctional or non-functional. Let's see what are these. Merton tries to explain what is a function. He says that a function should be seen from the perspective of the observer and not the participant. For example, for a woman who is getting married, the function of marriage might be to fulfill her need of love. But the objective function of marriage is socialization of child okay so this is from the participants point of view and this is from the observers point of view thus a sociologist needs to see the function of a social institution or a cultural practice in the form of its contribution to social order this is known as objective consequences and not the subjective disposition. That means objective from the perspective of the observer and subjective from the viewpoint of the participant. Merton differentiates between functions and dysfunctions. He says that functions are observable and they help in the adaptation of a system. For example, family helps in socialization and adaptation to social order. On the other hand, dysfunctions, they lessen or reduce the adaptation or adjustment. For example, caste system. In modern India, which follows the principle of democracy or the polity is of the form of democracy. Here, the caste system, instead of intensifying the democratic ideal, it lessens the degree of mobility, right? And democratization as well as participation. So, this is a hindrance to democracy. It lessens the value of democracy. Hence, it is a dysfunctional aspect of society of modern India. The non-functional consequences, they are irrelevant and we are not, not much concerned with this while studying Merton. So, we will focus on the functions and the dysfunctions. Merton divides functions into two types. First one is manifest and second one is latent. Manifest functions are those which are easily observable and they can be recognized through common sense knowledge by the 
participants by the society by people for example when a criminal is punished it is a reminder to him or her that the act of deviance will not be tolerated this is the manifest function but the latest function latent function is different what is a latent function those functions which are latent or hidden they are not easily observable to the participants and only social scientists can see the depth of these functions for example in the punishment in sociology of punishment it strengthens society's faith in collective conscience for example repressive law thus a latent function is not intended what is intended the manifest function is intended and it is also not recognized for example the rain dance by hopi indians it is done to appease gods to bring rain and the manifest function is to magically cause rain or to magically bring rain but the latent function or the hidden function is to promote solidarity and strengthen community spirit and these kind of rituals or religious ceremonies they exist in society even though they are not fulfilling the manifest function because of their latent function which is enhancement of solidarity and community spirit the central idea of functionalism and structural functionalism is conformity conformity to what what do we understand by conformity and how is it related to collective conscience conformity is acting in accordance to accepted standards or the norms beliefs morals of a society so these exert pressure on individuals to obey them and thus help in the maintenance of social order or the collective conscience the opposite of conformity is deviance but conformity and deviance they are not like black and white areas most of the members of a society they have deviated from accepted rules of behavior for example breaking off traffic rules jumping a red light or traveling without a ticket all these are forms of deviance so in order to tackle deviance in society societal control exists in the form of sanctions their aim is to ensure conformity or obedience to societal values and norms what is a sanction then it is a reaction from others which counters deviance and promotes conformance or conformity sanctions are of two kinds first one is positive and second one is negative positive sanctions encourage conformity they are in the form of rewards while negative sanctions they discourage deviance or non conformity these are in the form of punishments sanctions can be given either formally or informally formal san- sanctions are given by specific bodies of people or agency for example in the form of laws while informal sanctions they may be less organized or they are like spontaneous reactions for example disapproving glances or certain remarks by people or elders or friends or neighbors anyone which has a negative connotation and which discourages certain behavior while studying deviance merton used the concept of anomie anomie if you remember is characterized by normlessness or undermining of the norms of society 
for example due to secularization in the modern society religion has lost its status of moral authority it does not define norms at as it used to before also there is rise in individual freedom and hence choices desires all these promote non conformity or deviance merton calls his theory of deviance as strain theory he studies the american american society and he says that its social structure is the source of a form of deviance so social structure you know social structure according to functionalist it leads to social order but here what merton is saying that social structure of the american society is leading to a form of deviance this deviance here is crime the lower working class they want to attain or gain immediate financial wealth they want wealth quickly and that is why they adopt illegal means or they resort to crime they use crime as means to gain financial wealth which is the end for them now the question which merton ask is why why do they do this he says that it is because of a strain between societal values and the reality social reality or the means of achieving these values so the american society it develops strain the structure develops strain when the values they are in conflict with the social reality this is what merton says now what is this american dream the american society it values material success and it encourages achieving it through self discipline education and hard work thus it is quite attractive to immigrants and it places everyone on an equal level it says that people who work hard can succeed no matter what their starting point in life is but the disadvantages groups even though they want to achieve this american dream they have limited opportunities for advancement so what are they do going to do they also want to succeed they also want to gain material wealth so they are under pressure or strain to get ahead by any means either legitimate or illegitimate illegitimate means which is not approved by society merton gives five adaptive responses to social strain so when this kind of strain happens when there is a conflict between goals and means then people develop certain strain they are under pressure to achieve their goal or material success by any means so there are five kinds of responses first one is conformity second one is innovation third ritualism fourth retreatism and fifth is rebellion we will see this one by one here the conformists they accept the approved values this one and the means of achieving them the means that means legitimate means and most of us we fall under this category the second category of people they are the innovators these people they are imperfectly socialized so they accept the values approved values but they do not accept the means because they 
do not have the means right they have the legitimate avenues blocked so they turn to illegitimate means for example criminals when acquiring wealth illegally for example money laundering the next section is ritualists the ritualists they are strongly socialized so they do not resort to crime okay no but they do not succeed in achieving material success yet they follow the socially accepted means religiously for example there are people from the lower middle class even though they have a very boring job they have no career prospects still they are continuing them monotonously because they have been socialized they have been taught that it is wrong to adopt illegitimate means to fulfill their goals the fourth kind of response is by the retreatists they have abandoned the values and the legitimate means these are the dropouts of society like outcasts vagabonds chronic drunkards or drug addicts so people with addictions they do not play any role in wider society they are unable to achieve material success though so they resign to failure and they retreat from the society or they drop out of the mainstream society the last kind of response is by the rebels they reject both the existing values as well as legitimate means but they do not drop out no instead they work for the transformation of society of the system and they bring new values and new goals so they replace the approved values with their own go values and replace the approved means with their own means these are members of for example rising class or radical political groups another thinker who studied the structural strain of american society he was albert cohen he stressed on group behavior group response merton emphasized on individual responses but cohen he saw this as a result of group behavior or or the formation of subculture smaller parts of culture these are subcultures like for example gangs boys in the lower working class they are frustrated with their position and they join together to form gangs they reject the middle class values so they replace them with norms that celebrate non conformance or deviance defiance means opposition or resistance while studying deviance merton he connected this concept of deviance to relative deprivation of manual working class groups he says that because these people they are relatively deprived that is why they deviate from the accepted norms of society now what is relative deprivation relative deprivation is deprivation or any lack of for example material resources or success when they are compared to a frame of reference this frame of reference can be a societal group or it can be difference in opportunities so whenever there is a relative deprivation then person or people will be motivated or they will choose accordingly because these people who are relatively deprived or who have less than others 
then they will always aspire or they will want what others have they might have this class may have more opportunities more wealth more success so the deprived class or relatively deprived class will aspire towards all these features so here comes the concept of reference group an individual can have two reference group that means the frame of reference that i talked about so that frame of reference is actually a reference group first one is membership group it is the group to which one person belongs or is a member to it and this group has certain expectations which is fulfilled by the individual second one is non membership group which to which a person is not a member and he or she does not belong to this member but he aspires or he wants to be a part of this group because perhaps it is more powerful or more prestigious therefore the individual is motivated by this non membership group and his achievements or the desire to achieve desire to perform or ambitions are driven by this non membership group the reference groups can be divided into two types on the basis of the motivation first one is positive a second one is negative positive reference group it is the one which motivates someone to achieve more or to perform more and it shapes his or her behavior and it motivates him or inspires him or her to evaluate to assess his or her progress but the negative reference group is disliked by this individual and is rejected by him and instead of following the norms of this group the individual develops counter norms for example the natives of a particular colony they hate the colonizers because they exploited them for wealth for taxes so the native will never follow the norms of the colonizer and instead they will come up with new norms in order to oppose these colonizers for example the promotion of swadeshi swadeshi and the boycott of foreign goods yes so these are some forms of counter norms and in a positive reference group for a, for a civil service aspirant a bureaucrat can be or the class of bureaucracy can be a positive reference group like group even individuals can influence people because of their qualities like charisma status glamour their roles are appreciated and imitated for example apj abdul kalam he was a teacher a scientist and president he was admired by people for his different roles but what happens when a person is motivated by a non membership reference group he conforms or he accepts the standards of behavior of this non membership group and he rejects the norms of the membership group so there is conflict in this group because now that person is identifying with this group he does not want to be a part of this group and that is why he encounters conflicts with the members of this group the dynamics of this reference group behavior can be seen here when someone is motivated by let's say a teacher 
that means teacher is a reference group so one needs to understand the state status or states of a role and the people that a teacher interacts with as well as the responsibilities attached to a the teaching profession for example a teacher has to interact with students his fellow teachers or colleagues and board members so each has a different set of demands which give rise to role conflicts now a teacher is also maybe a spouse a parent a sibling or a community worker so these add on to this conflict so the person if someone is seeking to be a teacher he or she should know about the role sets as well as the status sets and what all difficulties these bring also every status has a certain sequence for a teacher maybe he may go for research and become a research scholar and then finally an assistant professor now in order to tackle these conflicts the role conflicts while choosing a reference group or reference individual one needs to choose those statuses which are similar to the present status for example if someone is a scholar if he or she wants to become an army officer then it would be very difficult to reconcile these two statuses but if the scholar becomes a professor then it will be easier for these statuses to reconcile or there will be agreement there will not be much conflict therefore any person who is looking for a new reference group or is motivated by another reference group should keep this point in mind that the new status or the new reference group should have a certain symmetry with his or her present status so in short social institutions or cultural practices they have certain functions as well as dysfunctions as described by merton also along with the manifest or the visible functions there are latent or hidden functions and in any society especially in the modern society which gives rise to anomie deviance or deviant behavior is on the rise it increases during times of anomy and while choosing reference groups one should take into consideration role conflicts this summarizes robert merton so there are three sources or three chapters which should be done first one is from ignu eso 13 you have to read concepts of functions from the chapter manifest and latent function second concepts of reference group from this chapter theory of reference group and third part you need to study the blue haralambus chapter on crime and deviants r k merton social structure and anomy that's all for today the next eft will be on gh meet so all the best and happy learning enjoy